Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, in this month's tutorial we are going to do a cat um, and I've got the reference photo from Pixabay so I'll get it linked down below. It's only a small image but all the measurements and everything. The materials list is uh, down below in the description. Any questions let me know um, and yeah let's get doing another tutorial. So I'm going to start off with my uh, dark sepia as usual and I'm just going to start off by outlining our eye. Now this piece we've only got the one eye to do but I'm still going to work from the eye and around. And I want to make sure that I'm getting a really nice definition, nice sharp pencil as well. So I hope you've all been well. I know it's been a while since I've done a tutorial. Been busy. Um, and something new that I want to talk to you guys about is I have launched a Patreon. So on my Patreon, I am uh, obviously doing monthly tutorials. Um, and it's where most of my tutorials are now going to be. There's a few tutorials up there already. Um, and lots more planned. So I hope to see maybe some of you uh over there um i will keep doing youtube tutorials they'll just probably go down to like one every other month instead just so you can see i'm just following what i'm doing with this eye is i'm just following the darker shapes and mapping them in and then we've got like the pupil here which is a bit more blue tone but i'm just going to very lightly map it in just so I know where it is. So yeah, on the Patreon already, we have a, a Great Dane puppy, um, a frog, um, a French bulldog puppy. Um, and there's going to be lots more. There's going to be birds, a lot more wildlife, more dogs. Um, so every month there's one full tutorial. Um, and then there's focus tutorials. If anybody just wants to like do the eyes or do... Um, noses things like that okay i'm now taking my dark sepia uh, dark indigo sorry just in that bit not hard as you can see i've not pressed hard at all and i'm just going to bring it up around the corner of her eye as well Now we've got quite a greenish eye, so I'm going to use um, the ivory as my base layer. And I'm just going to um, just lift that bit of um, ivory, a uh, bit of graphite, sorry. Wow, words. <laughs> um, and then I'm coming in with the ivory. Now you want to be careful where we've got the blue. We don't want this bit to go green in the middle of the eye. And also what I'm not doing is I'm not adding the um, eyelashes that I can see. I'm not adding them because I'm going to come in over the top with my slice tool instead. So I'm just going to come in with it. Oh, hang on. Every time I sharpen. Fairly medium pressure. And I'm just applying this across this part of the eye. Okay, and then I'm going to take my uh, coal grey two, and with the coal grey two, I'm coming to the edge of the eye here, and I am pressing fairly hard now. And along the top edge of the eye here, so this is going over the top of that ivory. almost as another base layer. I'm then going to take my um, earth green and we're going to use um, circular motions with our earth green and remember that our eye is spherical so we are trying to make sure that we get that spherical look to the eye 
just curving around here where we've got that nice highlight and quite a sharp edge there and then I'm just going to come in circular motions now I'm not worried if it's not too smooth yet because we are going to keep building up the layers and the colours within the eye itself Okay, now taking the earth green yellowish, and again, I'm just going to come in Okay, and then I'm going to take, um, I want my uh, burnt umber and again I've got a nice, nice and sharp pencil and I'm just going to come in over the top of those greens and the top of this eye. I'm going to take my ivory over the top just to really help blend those areas together hard pressure with the ivory just to really get them blending nicely um, and then I'm going to take um, my light yellow ochre and we've got this nice really vibrant yellow strip is what I'm going to call it <laughs> coming down this part of the eye as well and I'm curving because we're still getting that spherical look to the eyes and then I'm just going to blend that outwards and upwards there um, and then back to that oops burnt umber I'm just going to bring that burnt umber coming down so there's going to be quite a few eyelashes covering the top of um, this eye which is why I'm using the burnt umber because it'll act as a nice shadow for then when we apply the uh, lighter uh, eyelashes really make those eyelashes pop Going back over that with my earth green yellowish. And I'm just going to run my cold grey 2 over that as well. Okay. Um, my earth green yellowish. Uh, no, just my earth green, sorry. Going down that bottom and then my ivory. Earth green yellowish. Now we do have this highlighted area up here. So I'm just making sure that I'm leaving that ivory that we had originally as the base layer. Uh, back to the earth green showing through <laughs> I'm just going to run my ivory over all of this okay taking that dark indigo again and I am just going to start to darken up this iris Now along the edge of the iris I can see um, some more of a dark green so I'm just going to take my olive green yellowish and run it along that edge and blend it very lightly outwards. So I'm blending over that dark indigo very lightly over the top so that we get that kind of a hint of it showing over out of the dark indigo sorry and blending the earth green yellowish upwards. Just going to use that earth green yellowish along this edge as well. I do like this colour, it's a very nice colour. It's the earth green yellowish. Um, 
back to this dark sepia just going to darken blend out okay uh, back to my uh, earth green circular motions again My uh, cinnamon, got a bit of pink highlight here. Uh, earth green yellowish. And then again, I'm just going to use my ivory. I'm not pressing too hard because I want to add more layers over the top of the green tones. I'm not going over that dark indigo area. Just the green. I'm now taking my uh, nugget because I want a hint of brown at the back of this eye. Very lightly. And again, it's just those circular motions. And it's just adding the colours that you can kind of see. I'm not worrying about the detail. And the reason I'm not worrying about detail is it is quite a small um, drawing. So... I know I'm not going to get a huge amount of detail within the eye itself um, and that is completely fine and I'm just looking for a cold grey for ideally um, hang on. using uh, the cold grey for the top of this eye Um, and then I have the cobalt blue greenish and I'm not going to press hard but I just want that hint of blue that we can see in this corner here and then we've got a bit of a blue line there and then I'm going to go back over the top part here with the cold grey four and then the cold grey two in this corner and also the cold grey two along this part of the eye Excuse me. Uh, just taking the ivory again, running it across all of this eye. Oh, I've got the hiccups. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry if you hear me making weird noises. Take my um, earth green yellowish. So now it's all about looking at the eye and just kind of seeing what I want to change and make pop. So I want this these kind of colours to just really start to pop out few little details that maybe didn't originally add the earth green and remember if you see any colors that i don't or you don't see the colors i'm adding this is the light yellow ochre again you don't need to add them uh, make sure you do the pieces uh, as you want uh, back to the burnt umber And then I'm just going to run it across and blend very lightly upward into the eye. Okay, um, just going to take the burnt umber again across the top of the eye. Uh, taking that nugget again uh, and then my ivory once more and then what I'm going to do so I've got my gold and I'm just going to come in over the top very lightly 
I'm just adding some like little flecks, little squiggly lines. And this will just really help enhance the details within the eye. I dark indigo because this isn't dark enough. Okay, and then back to the dark sepia. Nice and sharp. And again, I'm just pressing harder now because I want this darker area around the eye to really pop. Okay, and then I'm just going to take uh, my slice tool and what we're going to do with uh, the slice tool is just really enhance some of these highlights. So that little line that I've got coming around this eye and then you've got one kind of coming across here as well. And any little highlights that I can see I'm just adding in now if you don't have a slice tool you'll want to use uh, like a white pencil or you don't need to use anything at all <laughs> you will get away with uh, not adding it right I'm now taking my warm grey one because um, I want to start adding fur in around the eye so we're going to start with this bit of pink So one grey one as my base layer. Just taking that uh, dark sepia very lightly along the edge there. Um, and then I'm taking my Kaput Martin and blending outwards. So the Kaput Martin right along this dark edge. Ooh. And blending outwards. I don't know if anybody else has that issue with their pencils breaking when they've used their um, electric sharpener. If you use an electric sharpener. It's really annoying. Right, and then taking my cinnamon. Coming over the top of that um, Kaput Martin. And then well, I can see where it needs to be a little darker, so I'm just going to take my burnt umber along the edges to really help blend between that dark sepia and the Kaput Martin. And then again, it's just a bit of a layering process now. If you don't need to add extra layers, don't. Um, and then the cinnamon again, just between those colours that I've used previously. Back to my uh, warm grey wool. Now this is where we've got all these eyelashes uh, coming from. So again, I'm not kind of worrying about where the eyelashes are, I'm kind of looking at the skin underneath. Um, over the top of the warm grey one, I'm going to take my ivory. And my gold very lightly and I'm doing circular motions because I want it to look smooth going back over that with the ivory and then I'm going to take my beige red press fairly hard now And you've got that nice flesh colour 
I'm going to take the uh, kaput mortar I'm going to run it over the top here and upwards and again taking my beige red my burnt umber just there okay so you can see we're starting to really frame the eye quite nicely now just going to take the burnt umber where i think the top of this eye is and blend upwards so again when i come in and add the um, eyelashes i've already got a nice shadow there back to that beige red just to help blend okay so we have um underneath the eyes to add Taking my warm grey one again, up underneath this eye and blending outwards. And the same here. Take my ivory over the top of this. And then we're going to make it all blend really nicely together. So taking my dark sepia and then just you know, darken this sort of, it's almost like eyeliner around the eye. You've got this really dark line going on and then very lightly blending it outwards so nice light pressure so we blend it into this warm grey ivory mix and then I'm just going to take my uh, burnt umber very lightly along this edge as well now I can see a bit of pink in this corner so I've got my kaput mortem Again, light pressure, I'm not pressing hard. Bring that kaput mortem there. It's almost like just a very faint line. And then I'm bringing the burn, uh, beige red, sorry, in this corner and blending down. As you can see, I'm not using a lot of pressure. There's not a lot of pressure at all. Um, but you've got this nice pink tone uh, going on now. Okay, and then I am back to my burnt umber from this corner. Dark sepia. Okay, and then we want our brown, brown ochre and burnt ochre. I'm going to start with the uh, brown ochre. Because we've got a really nice yellowy tone, but we've also got that orange tone as well that I can see. So I'm just going to come in first of all with the uh, brown ochre and I'm blending outwards. So lighter pressure where I want it to blend outwards. Curving round because we're following that fur, fur direction. And light pressure as we come up here. My burnt ochre now. Mainly in this corner. over the top and then my ivory okay now I can see I need a bit of a reddish tone so I'm just going to take the uh, kaput mortem over the top there So you can see all the colours I'm using we've used elsewhere and it's really just starting to blend uh, this whole area together. Just taking that dark indigo again, just darken that little pupil up there. And I'm just going to bring that dark indigo lightly because we've not got a base layer yet, but very lightly here. And I've added that first because it will give us a nice shine underneath the base layer when we get to it. I'm going to take my warm grey 2 now. 
And I'm just going to add a bit of detail around this eye. The gold. And the cold grey two coming down along this bottom edge. And in this a bit of the eye. And then my warm grey one again, just blending. You can see just how smooth this area is looking now. And when we come in later with the fur round here, we can really start to add the definition to the fur. Okay, I'm going to take this cold grey too, press pretty hard now and just blend this corner. You see how that blue shines through now, really nicely. Back to the dark sepia. And then I'm going to take my cold grey four. over the top there and we're getting a really nice looking eye uh, taking the ivory now just in this corner okay um and now i'm going to take my um brown ochre and again you want to follow the fur direction because it's coming up and sort of around this nose Blend into that cut mortar mixture. So everything's looking really blended and smooth because you're constantly blending into those areas that you've already got. Get the uh, burnt umber. So this is quite a small drawing. Um, obviously, the measurements will be on the materials list for you guys. So it's kind of, uh, this is the burnt ochre, it's about adding details but not adding too many when you're drawing sort of this scale. Um, and then I'm just going to take the nugget to really add in a little bit of detail. And my ivory. over the top there okay going back to my warm grey one um, and I'm also going to take my cold grey one uh, cold grey one over the top of that warm grey one Okay. Um, and you can also, if you wanted, you could run over that with uh, your white. And then I'm just going to take my warm grey two, sort of coming up. With a, uh, my cinnamon, actually. I'm going to take the cinnamon. This needs to be sharp. You want a really sharp point. And with the cinnamon, I'm just very lightly. Dragging out those finer details along here. Okay, actually I think I'm going to take my white and just really burnish this area. So when I mean by burnish, you're really pressing hard with your white pencil and pushing that pigment into the paper. As you can see, it's really going to smooth this area out. And then what I can do is just come back in with my cinnamon and just add in a few of those lines again just for that detail that you have kind of softened out um, of that part of the eye right so I think the way forward is we need to come down towards like the nose and then work our way back around the face but I am going to add in some of these um, eyelashes just to show you how I would do it so again I've got the slice tool 
and I'm just going to come in and just follow kind of the shapes that I can see. Constantly wiping the edge of my slice tool when I've done one of the eyelashes. So do an eyelash, wipe the blade clean. And now you don't need to be exact, you just want to get kind of the general shapes. And the general direction that they're going in. Now if you've used light enough layers, you might be able to do this with an er your Tombow eraser. Um, but I definitely recommend the slice tool. I have a affiliate link in the description box. Uh, for anybody who wishes to purchase one because it is definitely a tool that I highly highly recommend I use it a lot in my work and then what I'm going to do now is just going to come in with my white you want to make sure that you've cleaned your white pencil as well so just rub it on a different piece of paper and I'm just coming in over some of these areas the burnt umber if I need to go behind and my um, olive green yellowish on the eyes just to add a bit of shadow underneath some of these areas like so Okay, so I am going to start and add some more of this uh, white fur. So what I'm actually going to do is, uh, this is something I learned from another artist and it re works really well. So we're going to give it a go on this tutorial. And this is why we never stop learning and it's amazing to watch and learn from other artists. So I am going to take my white and again, I've made sure it's nice and clean. Now I'm not going to press hard, but you're going to just apply the white where it's really really bright which is mainly along the bridge of this cat's nose and I'm just going to apply my white along here now obviously you're using a white pencil you might not be able to see where you've done it when you look at it from a certain angle you should be able to see a glare from the white pencil that's kind of what you're looking for but don't worry if you don't get it across the whole area now, I know you can't see where I've added it, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do now. So I'm taking my core grey one and again, following that fur direction. But as I come over where I've got that white, I'm getting a really nice lighter core grey one. So I'm not worrying about it being too dark. And it's just giving a really nice effect. And then along this bridge of the nose, I'm using circular motions here and then coming up with the fur direction. So yeah, it's really, really helpful for areas where it's quite bright white, but obviously not brilliant white. To add it as a layer first with your white pencil and then go over. And you can see now we've got a really nice light cold grey area just blending into that area there. Just works really, really well. And then I'm just going to add a few little details here. Like so. So I'm just going to do that down uh, the nose here as well. So not pressing too hard with the white because you want to be able to work on top of it. And I found if you go too hard with the white, you can't always draw on top of it. And then my cold grey one again. And I'm using circular motions here because the fur is so short. Can't really see much detail. So it's easy to get a nice smooth finish. Okay, and then I'm just going to press a little harder just to really give a little few fur direction here. And then if I really wanted to blend this again, I could go over with the white. Again, I'm not pressing hard. 
It blends really nicely. I'm just going to take my warm grey too. Nice and sharp, just to add a few little fur details, because we are going to come up with a warm grey too, just along this edge here. Okay. You see, it really works really nicely. Okay, so I've now got my warm grey one as we come down to the top of this nose. Just again, lifting a little bit of graphite. Oops, because she does have a white nose. <laughs> And I'm just going to very lightly with the warm grey one. Now you could do that white layer again, but I'm just going to come in with the warm grey one without that white layer. And then I can just blend into the whiter. Cold grey areas there. And then just lightening my pressure as I blend upwards. I'm going to take my cold grey one just to help get a nice smooth transition okay back to that warm grey one and then I'm just going to take my beige red along that edge as well back to my white and again just harder pressure now not too hard just to help burnish and blend those areas together so I'm going to get the nose in next and um, just very lightly lifting there now it's got quite a purplish point so I'm going to take my um, light red violet which I thought I had out but I don't it's here and I'm just going to start by mapping out that nostril area very lightly not pressing hard And bringing it down here. I'm going to also take the light magenta. And that okay, and then I'm going to take um, my warm grey one, but don't press too hard. Circular motions. The light magenta along this edge and then the beige red and you'll see at the moment it looks a mess and it's a bit hard to tell what's going on but we will make it look right. I'm going to take my Kaput Morton so taking the Kaput Morton along this edge <sighs> And up a little bit. Back to that light red violet. Okay, I'm also going to take my Venetian red. And I'm just blending that outwards a little bit there. And then the pink Madder Lake. Again, blending. Going to take our beige red once more. And then we're going over the top of all that with the warm grey one. And then any areas that I need to do again. I'm actually just wanting my... Um, if I have it out, I do, um, my Indian red, just where these nostrils are. That pink mother lake again. Venetian red. And then using my beige red to just help blend the bottom of this nose. Just 
curve in that corner with the Indian red because it was too sharp a point. My warm grey wool. And I'm just going to take the cold grey wool around the bottom part of this nose here. Blending it outwards. Um, my warm grey too now, because this area is the fur is definitely darker than the nose. So I'm just coming in, darkening that up. And again, just taking that beige red over the top. Also going to take my ivory over the top of this nose. Take the gold. And then run the ivory back over the top. And then to soften that edge of the nose, I'm just taking the white. And my cold grey worn. Okay, take the uh, cold grey too. So again, this is all now just about making these areas look blended together, nice and smooth. And add in a little bit of detail. Like so. Okay, taking my cold grey one again. Light pressure. I'm going to run my ivory again nice and lightly, I'm not pressing hard over the top, back over with the cold grey one again light pressure and then I'm going to burnish with the white just to blend and push the pigment into the paper And it just keeps this area looking really nice and light. Again, cold grey one. Just want to kind of connect this little bit of nose to the bit we've got done already. The ivory. Back over with a cold grey one. And burnish with a white. Okay, taking my cinnamon. Just to add a little bit of detail in around that nose. So, okay, taking my brown ochre. So this is me just kind of, I guess, fiddling a little bit, but I'm just really bringing details in and colours where I want them. Taking my ivory, just going to go over that bit of brown ochre that I just added there. Okay, I've missed a corner of the eye there, so I'm just going to take my warm grey wool. Um, and then the cold grey too. And with that cold grey too, again, just going to add a few little detail lines. To the eye. And my white. <sighs> Co 
purple grey one okay I'm really happy with how this is looking um, I'm just going to take that earth green, earth green again just in the side now with these eyelashes I'm probably going to come in with a brush and pencil um, or the pearl burnish I've got a new product the pearl burnish um, to really make them pop but for now they're looking good um, but I think we're going to leave this tutorial here. We've got the eye and nose done. We've started on the fur. Um, and as we get going on uh, the rest of her, it gets a little tricky. Um, so I want to do it section by section because we have a lot of tabby fur to draw in. So um, I hope you enjoyed this part of the tutorial. Um, don't forget to like and comment on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.